Hi, this is Lee Ellis with this month's Leading with Honor Coaching. Today I'd like to talk about boundaries. Now I know you're probably saying, well, there have been a lot of boundaries around. We've been hearing about that. Well, two things recently have brought it to my mind again, and I think it's time to bring it up and talk about it, especially from a leadership perspective. The two items that triggered me were, one, March Madness. It was been a really important game. The basketball was coming down very close to the line, and did it hit the line and mean it's out of bounds, or was it in bounds? Because we're in overtime, and this is a very important game. So boundaries was very important there. And I thought about it. You know, there are boundaries in football, out of bounds, in bounds, basketball. Baseball has a foul line and out of bounds, so to speak. Tennis has a line, and of course there are a lot of arguments in tennis over did the ball hit the line. So boundaries are there in sports. Boundaries are everywhere in our lives for a reason, because they serve a purpose. Uh, wisdom of the ages have proven that boundaries are very helpful. So it's really about uh, not having rules so much as having things, uh, boundaries help us be more effective. And especially in leadership, that's the way I like to look at it. Well, the other example recently was a young 17-year-old uh, fellow from Parkland High School who's been on TV dropping the F-bomb right and left. You see, I grew up in an era, and to some degree that era still exists, where that would be very inappropriate. But he doesn't respect our boundaries, and I'm sure that he's turned off a lot of his viewers because he's dropping the F-bomb right and left, and it really undermines his cause and his message. He may be happy about it and think he's cool in doing it, but he's really undermining himself, at least with the, the majority of Americans, I would say. So boundaries would help him in that situation be more effective in getting his message out. I think so. Well, let's look at it from a leadership perspective and how does this all come back to us as leaders. And first of all, we always have to start with ourselves. We have to know what our boundaries are what the expected boundaries are around us, and we have to live within those. Now, in my early training in the military, we were taught that we had not only to avoid wrongdoing, but to avoid the appearance of wrongdoing. So our boundaries were a little bit stronger and uh, more critical in some ways than what maybe the average person would have. And I would say that's a good, a good boundary for all leaders is to avoid the appearance, not just wrongdoing, but the appearance of wrongdoing because the appearance will lead people to think there is wrongdoing, which will undermine your leadership. So we as leaders respecting those boundaries around us that we know are important, that we are committed to, and then how do we help the next generation learn about boundaries? You know, the younger generation always wants freedom from boundaries because they're away from home and now we're on our own and we can do whatever we want to do. That's not the case. It may feel that way, but it's not the case. And so younger people have to learn through experience about boundaries. And as leaders, that's part of our role. When I was a squadron commander in the Air Force, uh, I had to remember that and notice that, that younger people were more hesitant to enforce boundaries if they were leaders supervisors. And so I had to kind of coach them on why it was important. So what I've learned about all this is, one, you have to not only clarify the boundary, but the purpose of the boundary, and then help people understand that there are consequences when boundaries aren't followed and, and observed. We see that if you're driving down the highway and there's a white line there on the outer out side of the road next to the shoulder, well, if you get off the shoulder, you could get you know, have a wreck, and it happens all the time. People get off the shoulder and they lose control of their car, they turn over, they hit another car. So boundaries do have consequences. But as leaders, we have to explain to people and use that relationship capital to help them understand why the boundaries are there and why it's in their best interest of themselves and the organization to follow it. So we clarify. Going back to our uh, courageous accountability model, we want to clarify clarify, clarify. Then we have the same expectations as the people who are around us, if we've clarified. We have to collaborate with them. We have to help them understand why this boundary is there and why it's in their best interest, why it helps the organization. So that's going to take some dialogue. It's going to take some time. And we can't just assume that everybody understands what we understand. We have to be able to pass that on to them in a very healthy way, in a reasonable way. 
We have to connect with them. Some people, you just, you can be very subtle. You just say it one time and they don't forget it and they respect it. But there are other people who have strong personalities, kind of like mine, is that if you don't really clarify with, with a little energy behind it and with a little power behind it, they may ignore it. As a squadron commander, I also had a, a squadron of about 50 instructors who had a thousand hours in the airplane. They were highly experienced, very competent, and I knew that some of them were going to push the boundaries of FAA and Air Force rules and regulations for flying. And so about every six months at commander's call, I would make sure they understood that there were boundaries and there were consequences. And so I would tell them, look guys, you're great. You're doing a great job. I care about you. I'm your friend. But if you step over the boundary and you violate the regulation, you're going to feel like I'm your worst enemy because I'm coming after you and I'm going to hammer you. And you need to know there's going to be bad consequences and you may lose your wings and never fly again. Because I knew their personalities were so strong, without the power and the convincing that I would use it, they would step over the boundaries. And I didn't want that for them. I didn't want it for me or the Air Force or our civilian population around the base. So thinking about those kind of things of how to clarify, connect, collaborate around boundaries and making sure that people understand them so they can benefit and the organization can benefit from having those boundaries. It's always been a problem with young people. It may be a little bit more so now and that our culture is a little bit more lax about boundaries, but leaders, we need to take the responsibility of helping our young people understand about boundaries. And when they don't meet the standards, so to speak, then we have to be able to confront them and apply the consequences. And that will take a lot of courage. If we've done our job along the way of clarifying, connecting, collaborating, then we know when it's time to confront, we're doing the right thing for them, the organization, and ourselves. That's what Leading with Honor is all about, thinking ahead and doing the right thing. And that's what I encourage you to do this month. And we'll, in the written blog that comes out uh, this week also, you'll see a little bit more on that, and I hope you'll pick up on that and share that as well. Thanks, and see you next month.